here in the, uh, this line here, this temple, small temple which is built here. This is the birthplace of Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur, who is a very important personality in the Vaishnava tradition. Vrindavan Das Thakur is the Vyasa day of Sri Chaitanya of Gora pastimes. Srila Vyasa Dev wrote the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Vrindavan Das Thakur is the acknowledged, authorized commentator on the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, which comes in the form of his wonderful book, Chaitanya Bhagavat. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur describes himself in that book as the last disciple of Lord Nityananda. We don't know if it's actually true if you are just saying this out of humility, but he describes himself in that way. The very last disciple of Lord Nityananda. Interesting to note that Lord Nityananda is also responsible for inspiring Krishna Das Kaviraj to write Chaitanya Charitamrita. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur is described as being the son of Narayani. Narayani was one of the sisters of, uh, one of the brothers of Srivas Thakur. And uh, usually when we describe someone, we will mention them by their father's name. But Vrindavan Das Thakur is known by the mother's name. The mother is acknowledged as the great devotee. Of, he is the son of Narayani. Now, usually when we talk about anyone, we'll mention who is the father. But in his case, we speak about the mother. The mother position is even more special than the father in that case. Because Narayani, as a young child, she got the mercy from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave some prasada to her when she was just a little girl. So everyone uh, remembers that and acknowledges Narayani is being very fortunate to receive prasadam from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this way Vrindavan Das Thakur is recognized as the son of Narayani. Another pastime which took place here in Modric Brumadwit was when Lord Ramachandra came here in the Treta, in the, uh, in the Treta Yuga. He came here along with Sita and Lakshman when they were in exile. And Lord Ramachandra was sitting here in Madhramadweep and he was appreciating the beauty of this holy place. And he was sitting and smiling to himself. And Mother Sita was watching and looking at her husband and she was thinking and she said to him, what are you smiling about? Why are you laughing? What, what are you thinking about? Makes you feel so happy. And Lord Ramachandra decided that, oh, in the future, I will be, uh, in the future, in the Kali Yuga, I will, I will come here and I will, in, the, in, my, in my future incarnation, I will take sannyas. I will be here, I will be a householder, you will be my wife, and I will take sannyas. But Mother Sita said, why are you smiling? <laughs> why should that, that should make you happy? You're going to go and leave me? I'm your consort, I'm supposed to be always with you. Why, why are you going to leave me? So then Lord Ramachandra explained to her that by taking sannyas, we, we will increase the love. The, se the, the love in separation is even greater than in the, being in the, in the association and being in the presence. It's also understood that when Lord Ramachandra was king, we know that at one point he had to send Mother Sita back into the ashram of Balmiki because he heard Mother Sita be, being criticized, that she wasn't chaste and that Lord Ramachandra was simply a henpecked husband. So he thought, I cannot allow my citizens to think like that. So I will send Mother Sita, even though she was pregnant, he sent her off into the ashram of Almiki. And when, and then of course Mother Sita entered back into the air, she, and feeling the separation from Lord Ramachandra, she returned to the air. So then, 
Lord Ramachandra as a king, whenever he wanted to do yagya, he would have a deity made. He would have a deity. His, he, would, he had made a vow, Eka Patni Vrach, only one wife. So when he wanted to do yagyas, he would have the deity of Mother Sita sit by his side. So then, in the Kali Yuga, the situation was reversed. That in the Kali Yuga, Lord, Ram Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taken sannyas, and Vishnu Priya was left with no husband. Instead, she was worshipping the deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We went, when we were in Navadri, we went to Siddhameshwar Mahaprabhu. So you can see that in Trita Yuga, it was Lord Ramachandra who had no wife. And his wife was there in the form of the deity. And then in this Kali Yuga, Vishnu Priya, her husband had gone and taken sannyas, and she was worshipping the deity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is some of the pastimes here. This Modrumadri was where Lord Ramachandra was indicating that in the future I will take sannyas and by that we will increase our love and feeling. Okay, so we have also Vasudev Datta. We didn't speak much about Vasudev Datta. We said his deity was there. Of course, Vasudev Datta was a very great devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He became very dear to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he revealed his inner mood. He said, let all the living entities be liberated and I will stay here and suffer for them. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard these words, then he was so pleased. He thought, who could be more compassionate than Vasudev Dada? That he is willing to remain here in the material world and suffer birth after birth so that all the sinful souls can be liberated. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in loving reciprocation for the mood of Vasudev Datta, facilitated this desire of Vasudev Datta and he liberated all of the souls from this world. So we have with us, my dear God brother, Srila Prabhupada's disciple, Bhakti, His Holiness Bhakti Vishrambha Madhava Maharaj. He's very well known for being a very learned scholar. He has read many Shastras, he has a lot of knowledge, and we can benefit greatly by hearing from him. It's our very good fortune that he has come from Vrindavan, where he spends a lot of his time, that he's kindly come over to Mayapur, and it's even more merciful that he's come out to visit us on the Parikram. So we ask Maharaj, please give us some of this. Kodra Madweep was the place of Kirtan. Now we're in Madhram Dweep. The process of Devotion, devotional service here, Smaranam, with proper hearing and chanting, then remembrance is very easy. Remembrance will come naturally. So, this, this place is called Madhyama Dvip. Uh, there are two descriptions of the Navadvip Parikram, two sources of evidence. One comes from Bhakti Radnakara. In Bhakti Radnakara, you have Ishan Thakur taking Srinivasa Charya on Parikrama. Ishan was the servant of Sachimata in the home of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Ishan was the servant. And after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, Ishan remained and served Sachimata. So, in Bhakti Ratnakar, describe how Ishan Thakur took Srinivasacharya on this Navadriptam Parikram. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in his Navadriptam Mahatmya, he describes 
how Lord Nityananda brought Jiva Goswami on this parikram. So we have these two different descriptions. Uh, this uh, particular island of Madhya Madhvip, there's description of how this place got the name Madhyam Dweep. <coughs> Madhyam means the, the middle of the day. And it describes how the Sapta Rishi, the seven Rishis, they came to visit Lord Brahma and they saw that Lord Brahma was chanting the names of Goranga and he was in great ecstasy. So they asked Lord Brahma how they could develop that Goranga tree. So he told them, you should go to Navadri Dham. In Navadri Dham, it's very easy to develop Gora Prem. And with Gora Prem, then you become qualified to enter into Braja Dham and worship Radha and Krishna. So the Saptarishis, they all came down to Navadri Dham and they were residing here in this place and they were worshipping Lord Goranga, chanting the holy name and they were praying, they were fasting, they were doing great austerities and calling out the name of the Lord in great love and finally Lord Goranga appeared to them and the time in which he appeared was the middle of the day. So this is how this island became known as Madhyam Dweep, referring to the period of the day in which Lord Chaitanya, Lord Garanga appeared to the Saptarishi in this place, in the Satya Yuga. So this temple here, this is Hamsa Bahan. Anyway, this this Janani uh, Vas Prabhu can tell us a lot about the local history of this deity, very interesting deity. Of course, the deity is Lord Shiva riding on the back of Lord Brahma's carrier, the swan. Comes up. Lord Brahma usually rides on the swan. So it, it is narrated that one time Lord Shiva was coming to hear Gora Kata. Sutta Goswami was reciting Gora Bhagwa in Naimisharanya, which is not far away from here. We'll be visiting Naimisharanya next from here. And Lord Shiva was coming to Naimisharanya to hear Gora Bhagwa from Sutta Goswami. But he is coming on the back of Nanda. Nanda's a bull. I mean, you ride on the back of the bull, it doesn't go very fast. It's a bit slow. And Lord Shiva was very eager to hear. What, right? Eagerness, the qualification for hearing. Utsahan, right? We have to have that enthusiasm, very important qualification. Rupa Goswami said, Utsahan Nisya Dharya, right? Enthusiasm, patience, determination, very important in every endeavor and in, especially in the process of devotional service. Utsahan is very important. If you're patient, you can be too patient. You can wait too long. You know, oh, let's be patient, Prabhu, just be patient. In the future, I'll chant 16 rounds. In the future, I'll follow four principles. Please be patient. Patience, uh, some patience is required, but not too much. Enthusiasm, however, very important. We have a nice example of a very enthusiastic devotee, Maharaj Kulashekar. He was a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And he was always filled with this utsahan, this enthusiasm. Because Lord Shiva, he had that enthusiasm. He wanted to hear Gora Bhagwa. This bull is taking too long. Lord Brahma, give me, give me your swan. Let me go on this swan of yours. Then I will be able to hear the kata. So this enthusiasm is a very important qualification. Maharaj Kulashekar, one of the great awars in the Tamil history, he had great enthusiasm 
he would hear the pastimes of Lord Ram and he would be hearing about Ravi's army and how they were fighting against Lord Ram and when he would hear, he would say, call our army, let's go, we will all go, we have to go and help Lord Ram and all, he would get all of his soldiers, everybody, the whole army, he was a king and he had a whole army at his disposal, he called all his generals, get everyone, we have to go, we have to go to Lanka, we have to help Lord Ram and they, they all gathered, they, all, they, couldn't, they couldn't say, no, come on, stop it. He's the king, they have to follow the order. They had that enthusiasm. And he took his army, they marched all the way to the, they marched all the way to Rameshwaram, and they were there, uh, uh, and they were looking across the sea to Lanka, he said, let's go, we have to go to Lanka. And all the soldiers were just looking, and Maharaj Kulashekar, let's go! And he just drove, went right in there, right into the sea, in his enthusiasm. He had that enthusiasm to serve the Lord, to go and fight for Lord Ramachandra. And Lord Ramachandra appeared from the sea and carried, uh, carried him back to the land. So Maharaj Kulashekar is a wonderful example of that enthusiasm. And of course, in our modern time, we have the example of enthusiasm from our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, that he could go to the Western world with a few rupees and a few boxes of books and change the whole world. So that's, that's the kind of enthusiasm. Srila Prabhupada, Jesus. And Srila Prabhupada also saw that our only qualification, which we had, was some enthusiasm. So he would always, you know, encourage us, you know, to be, to keep up that enthusiastic spirit. To go and preach and distribute as much books and establish temples and do everything. He encouraged us. He told us, uh, when you go for preaching, you should like hunting, shoot for the rhinoceros, don't think small time, you know, go for the rhinoceros, then if you fail, then nobody will criticize you, but if you go rabbit hunting and you miss a rabbit, everybody will just laugh, you know, oh, you missed. So Prabhupada said, shoot for the rhinoceros, right, so we're, we're doing that, 90 million temple coming up, temple of Vedic planetarium, like that. You know, we're shooting for the rhinoceros. We have many big programs to distribute Krishna consciousness. We have to have that enthusiasm. And just like Lord Shiva, he had that enthusiasm here. That is the most important qualification. So, Janani Prabhu, would you like to tell us about... Um, Thank <laughs> you.